Oh man, look at me. I'm playing some sick old school RuneScape action. Let's attack this rock guard over here. I'm gonna stab. Give you the stabby stab. Oh, stabbed you right in the chest, man. Oh, let's switch to a highlight reel. Audio jungle. Audio jungle. Oh man, we gotta do the whoa face cam punch in. Not losing any resolution. Whoa, and back to the total scene with my overlays and everything. So you want to stream with your overlays, with your alerts, with your face cam over top of your gameplay, but you want to record just one or even two of those sources without any of the overlays or the weirdness or what have you. Previously, this has been really difficult, requiring multiple OBS instances, NDI, all sorts of weird workarounds, even from tutorials from myself, but now it is dead simple, and you can even record your gameplay and your face cam separately while still recording and streaming your stream if you'd like. And I'm going to show you how in today's video, because I am just so stoked for this video, brought to you by Nerd or Die. I'm Ebos Vox, the stream professor, and I make tutorials and educational video to help you master your technology and build better streams, videos, and broadcasts, what have you. So be sure to hit the subscribe and notification bell so you don't miss a future episode, and go check out my older videos to help master OBS and the like. Today's a slightly more advanced tutorial, but a lot easier than my previous iterations of this, in that we are taking a look at recording an individual source with OBS Studio while still streaming and recording and what have you, a full complex streaming layout. So typically a streaming layout involves, you know, you got your gameplay, you got your webcam, you got a frame, you got alerts, you got overlays, you got all of that, especially if you picked them up from our sponsor. And recording just one source out of that isn't really possible natively to OBS Studio. Streamlabs OBS has a filter for it, but I think this method is actually more advanced anyway. So this is for the OBS Studio users among you. For this, we will need a plugin from the the amazing plugin developer known as Excelro. He has made a source record plugin for OBS Studio. This released just earlier this year and has updated just this past month. Go ahead and download it and run the installer. You can manually drag and drop the folders if you know what you're doing, but I'm going to recommend most people just run the installer. That way you know that it's installed. Make sure OBS is closed when you do this and relaunch OBS Studio. Now pull up your streaming profile. So here I've set up a basic 1080p Twitch game streaming layout. We've got a game capture source, old school RuneScape. We've got an awesome webcam that I can't tell you about just yet. And we've got a webcam frame wrapped around it and gotten it all grouped up. And we can say we have other overlays and alerts going on and things like that. Let's say we wanted to just record the gameplay, either for highlights editing or to make quick you know clips for social media and we didn't want the rest of our stream shown well we can do that with this plugin find your game capture source right click it go to filters and then under effect filters you have source record this is the plugin we're going to be using if we click plus save source record gameplay record i'm going to go ahead and hide this filter because this actually affects how it works so we have quite a few options here i'm going to expand my window a bit that's not going to matter because we can't resize this section. Thanks, OBS UI. We have quite a few different options for how the recording and streaming of this works. So I'm going to try to walk you through some of your options because this can be quite in-depth if you want it to be, but it doesn't have to be. So you first and foremost have record mode. By default, it's set to none, but you have four different modes. Always, which means as long as this filter is shown and as long as, you know, everything is running, this specific source will always be captured and be recording to a file that you specify in a moment. You have streaming, which means as soon as you hit start streaming, it will start recording this source, which is perfect if you are a streamer and just want to record whatever you're streaming. This is the option you want. You have recording to where if you hit start recording, you're also recording this source alongside it, uh, which is great if you want to record, say, your desktop and your webcam side by side at the same time without doing the big multi layout. Uh, this is perfect if you want a 4K camera input and 4K desktop at the same time. Uh, this is actually what I'm going to be using for recording my tutorials moving forward, by the way. And then you have streaming or recording, which means if you hit start streaming or start recording, it will also record this source. So for the purposes of this, we're going to say always just so I can show it for the tutorial. However, like I said, if you're a streamer, you want streaming or streaming or recording. I think is most likely the best result for you. Now you have a path, which is where the file saves to. So if you're looking for where this file goes, I would recommend putting it in its own folder. So you could have, say, a record folder, but then a subfolder for this that's like just gameplay, for example. And then you have one for just webcam. And then you can set up your naming format. So you can actually say at the front here, gameplay underscore, and then the rest of the normal formatting that's there that's, you know, date hour time second whatever um, and it will 
add that to the front so that you know which one is which, which is helpful for organization. This is why you will want to give your files unique names in the modifier, such as webcam underscore and gameplay underscore, because your main recording scene can have the exact same file name structure because they're starting to record at the same time as your source file, which can overwrite the files. When you remux, things can get messy. And so, for example, this one has parentheses two next to it when I copied it into this folder because they have the same name. So make sure you get that file naming right. And then, of course, you have your format. MKV is recommended. If OBS crashes or something kicks up and you have MP4 selected, it will corrupt, whereas MKV most likely won't. All good there. Perfect. You can actually set up the replay buffer, which is the instant replay kind of thing for this specific source. So, for example, if you have it set to none, you can actually set up the replay buffer to only buffer this gameplay. So that means you can actually manually record with a hotkey trigger replays just for your gameplay and not for your whole scene which is really powerful if you don't have someone who's going to cut out highlights for you or you don't want to rely on twitch clips or whatever you can actually while you're in your gameplay you know you have a sick moment hit your hotkey to save the replay buffer and it will only record your gameplay which is incredibly powerful and of course you can set the duration for that as well for streaming you can actually set it to stream this video out to another location uh you wouldn't typically use this to stream out to say twitch or youtube or something but rather to stream to an rtmp server to for like in an educational or interview scenario to have someone else uh, recording it on a separate machine. It's an option. I uh, uh, Most of the users watching this video won't necessarily use it, but it is something that could be very, very helpful. I'm going to leave that on none, uh, but same idea. You just input your stream server and stream key. You can choose to record a different audio source with this source record. So you can choose to just record your gameplay audio if that's assigned to a specific device. So there's no option to just hook the game sound. That's not something OBS can do thanks to the Windows API, but you can just choose to record a specific source if you'd like, or for example, your microphone. Then you get to choose your encoder, which is the usual spiel. You either have, uh, you either have software, NVENC, or X264, which is software, of course. If you have the StreamFX plugin installed, you will actually have access to the StreamFX encoders as well. So you got AMD's encoder, you got Zaymar's custom NVENC H.264 and HEVC encoders, as well as ProRes. I don't have it installed in this portable instance, so you don't see that here. Uh, but for example, I can say NVENC. And then for recording profile, we'll do CQP of 18. Uh, turn that down to quality. Uncheck Psycho, because you don't need any of that for a high bitrate recording. And you're good to go. And now, as long as, if I set this back to always, as long as this is turned on, it's going to start saving to that just gameplay folder. So already that's great. I can go ahead and start recording this. Do to do to do to do do to do to do to do. We 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 hit stop recording. Show recordings. And if I scroll down, this has the latest recording that we just did. To do to do do to do to do to do. That's great. But now if we go into our just gameplay folder, we get we have a file, but you can see here it's incomplete. And that is because the filter is still shown, because I have it set to always instead of recording. So as soon as I turn off that filter, it's gonna finalize the file. And now we have just the gameplay displaying as well. Perfect. Magnifique. It's also worth noting if you don't want it to just keep recording the whole time that you are recording or streaming in OBS and you have it set to always, then you can assign a hotkey to the source record filter so that you can manually turn this effect on and off at will. So for example, we have the effect hidden, but we have it set to always. So then if we come down here to settings, and go to hotkeys, we now have a hotkey entry for source record enable and disable for OSRS or for the webcam. And so then you can assign a hotkey uh, to start and stop that so that you can manually hide and unhide that filter effectively, but start and stop recording that specific scene at will, which can be really powerful as well. So this is what most people want. This is what most people want to set up is to be able to record or use the replay buffer of their specific uh, you know, gameplay source so that they can create highlights and do what have you while they are doing a normal stream with their overlays. This is the basic functionality of how to record your gameplay without overlays. But we can take it to the next level because for a lot of highlight videos, you not only want your gameplay, but you still want your webcam or you want to be able to do cool pop-ins at a higher resolution with your webcam. Whereas if you zoom in on this tiny little webcam frame, it's going to look like crap because it's super low res by being shrunken down to size. So what you can do, so we come down to our webcam scene, even in our group here, since it is still running at whatever resolution we set it to in the capture device properties, go to filters and add a source record filter. Again, we're going to set it to the record trigger. 
We're gonna save it in its own just webcam folder here. Select folder. Then we're gonna come down here and go to encoder, NVENC or X264 if you have the AMD encoder or whatever. Set your settings and click close. Make sure our gameplay is also set to uh, record trigger here. And now when we hit start record, we go into our game. We're playing our game. We're playing RuneScape. And we're going to come over here and hit stop record. Now if we come down in here, we have our just webcam. Under gameplay, we have just gameplay. And then back in the video folders, because I'm a goof, we have our combo scene. Which, of course, Media Player Classic's going to be dumb about, but it is here. Yay! So this allows you to record your screen and your camera side by side to, you know, jump into full res camera mode at the same time, which is pretty powerful. So there are a couple key notes I want to point out for workarounds for issues that I have run into that you may also run into and I find important to note as well as some important details about the encoder usage you use here. So first and foremost, I did run into an issue where adding this filter to my webcam, my webcam specifically not having an audio device, uh, caused the recording filter for the webcam to not work at all. You have to add a custom audio device and just mute it, and then it works fine and everything caught up. Uh, Exeldro is working on this and will probably be able to fix it, maybe even by the time this video comes out. Just check the updates page. That's an easy workaround. The second issue is with regards to encoder usage. Currently, Invink New, even though I showed that earlier, Invink New does not work. If you use Invink New on a source like my webcam over top of my gameplay, it will actually record the entire scene instead of just your webcam. You have to use the older Invink implementation. Now that only applies to the built-in Invink New encoder within OBS. If you're using StreamFX, you actually have access to two other Invink encoders uh, built by Zaymar, one for H.264 and one for HEVC, and these use the benefit if it's gained by the new Invink encoder, but do not run into this issue with source record. So it's worth noting with that, that's a workaround if you still want the higher quality and better performance streams. This should not be an issue with AMD's encoder at all. However, relevant to the NVIDIA encoder, on GeForce cards, on desktop consumer cards, be it an RTX Titan or a GTX 1060, you are limited in the driver to three encode sessions at one time, which means you can only have three recording streams using Invink happening at one point in time, regardless of what you're using. So be it Shadowplay, OBS, Handbrake, FFmpeg, or just three different recordings in OBS, you are limited to three. There are tools to unlock unlimited if you have the performance available for it, but generally speaking, you have a maximum of three. So keep that in mind with your encoder selection here with you're doing that, because if you're, record if you're streaming with one set of settings, you're recording with one set of settings, and then your source recording with one set of settings, that's three. You can't add a fourth source and still use Invink. Now, you can get away with this if you're already recording your gameplay and say your face cam in higher quality, then you can just record your stream VOD at the same quality that you're streaming it and not sacrifice an extra encode session. So that's one workaround. Or alternatively, you can use the X264 mode, leave it on ultra fast since you're recording it in high quality, and it should provide minimal CPU impact depending on how low spec your computer is because ultra fast is fairly easy to run so you can do it pretty lightweight and not lose performance but keep in mind here that this is not magic you are still recording multiple different streams of video at the same time and the encode load and the resources required does scale with that requirement so just keep that in mind and of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk to you about our sponsor, Nerd or Die. Nerd or Die is your one-stop shop for stream layouts, overlays, alerts, free tools such as their Media Looper plugin, which allows you to loop lower thirds and things like that on your video with automated setup that's super easy. All of their layouts and things like that are pretty much all one-click setup in OBS Studio and Streamlabs OBS, which is really powerful among a variety of other things. They have awesome layouts like Amused and Overdrive, along with specific assets from their RetroWave and Glitch and the interface uh, layouts that I actually use in my regular videos and sneak those in time to time. Uh, head on over to eposvox.gg slash nerd or die, save 15% with coupon code eposvox at checkout. So there you go, super powerful plugin that unlocks a ton of potential, even if there are some quirks with it at the moment. Give feedback in the OBS community forums for that specific resource in the link in the description below where you can also download it. Hit the like button, subscribe, and remember, be kind, rewind.